Hi everyone and welcome to this short time-lapsed video of Omi the Little Pomeranian Spitz Mix. I hope that you enjoy this. If you do, please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Also check out all my other videos, some of them time-lapse, some of them real-time. And also consider checking me out over on Patreon if you'd like to see my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and get lots more instruction. So I decided to work on pastel matte paper for this and I really loved the photo reference when I first saw it. I do love to paint sunlight so to see such lovely light and shadows really makes my day. So the first mission is to get a bit of background in. I do like to work the background first so that the dog's fuzzy edges sit out over the top of the background work. So working on pastel mat, I haven't done too many of these out of focus backgrounds on pastel mat. I normally use velour, which is my other favorite paper, but I really am keen to experiment more with a more painterly background on pastel mat. And I really enjoyed creating this one. So keeping it really loose, using only the big sticks at this point, making nice bigger marks and doing a little bit of blending as well. So really softening the edges of everything. As long as you don't let anything in the background have really hard edges, then you're going to hopefully give it that slightly out of focus look and bring our full attention to little Omi. And there's also a lovely shadow being cast by the dog just to the left. So I've really got to think about what different colors I can use in the shadow area to give that effect. But I get the background to a certain point and then I can start the dog. Once I get some background behind some part of the dog, then I often like to make a start on that and get a bit of life in the painting. It really helps keep me motivated and not get too bored working on one area at a time. So the main thing that I loved about the look of the photo reference was knowing just how many colors were going to go into little Omi's fur. So the lights coming from the right side, that means that the majority of the dog is in shadow. And for a light colored dog, that means a lot of fun with color. So really just bright white down the right side of the dog and just peeping through the ears onto the top of the head very limited as to how much actual pure white I could use in this portrait. And you really want to try and save that pure white for just those areas so that it has the most impact. So I had so much fun picking out the colors for this, using lots of peaches, corals, pinks, and then lovely light lilacs, a whole range of colors, anything but white. I do love painting lighter colored dogs because you get so much reflection and so many colors bouncing off their coat. If you're interested in uh, learning more about painting white dogs or just light colored dogs, I'm not sure that Omi is pure white. It's more like a light apricot color. Then do check me out over on my Patreon channel because over there I share projects like this only in real time so not speed it up and you get all of the colors that I'm using popping up as little color codes in one corner so as I'm using a color you get to see exactly what color I'm using which is very helpful when you're just learning. Also I narrate those tutorials so along with the color codes I give you lots and lots of information on how to go about a project like this. So if fur is something that you would like to learn to paint better, do check me out on Patreon as that's something that I've covered in great depth over there. So such a sweet little face Omi has. And this is quite a clever photo reference because apparently Omi is missing his right eye. So we can only see his left eye in this photo reference. That's quite clever. 
but such a sweet little dog. And I believe that he is a mixture between a Pomeranian and a Spitz of some kind. He's a little rescue, so it's sometimes hard to know what you're getting when you rescue a dog. But he certainly resembles both of those breeds. I couldn't decide which one he was, so it makes sense that he's a mixture of both. If you look at the, the fur around the very edges, it's not completely straight lines that I'm making. Each little bit of hair has a slight uh, wave to it. So I've got to try and shake my hand a little bit as I'm making the marks, especially on the outer edges and those lovely fuzzy edges. So it's a little bit like uh, some other dog breeds, like the Chow Chow, for example, has really frizzy, fuzzy hair. So it's a slightly different technique when you're painting that kind of fur. You can't just make the marks totally straight. So back onto my background. And as I come down the composition, I'm really trying to bring it slightly more into focus. So really just the area surrounding the dog that I want to be in focus. But I also thought this time that instead of going into huge detail on the background, that I would try a slightly more painterly approach and leave it a little bit more graphic or illustrative, perhaps. Quite often when I'm doing a portrait like this, I will actually sit and replicate every blade of grass that I want to be in focus. But in this piece, I really wanted to firstly add a bit more grass around the dog, as in the photo reference, some of the ground looks a little bit bare. So I took a little bit of artistic license and added some more of those lovely greens. But I also wanted to experiment with not necessarily being a slave to the photo reference and just being a bit looser with the photo reference and my approach to painting that foreground area. So as I come down the background, I work my way down the dog also. Each time I get a bit of background done, then I can really work on those lovely fuzzy edges. And on pastel mat, sometimes it's a bit tricky if you're putting a light coloured dog on quite a vibrant or darker coloured background. It's difficult to not let your light marks get contaminated by the dark background. So it was tricky, but I'll go into more detail on all of that in the tutorials that I make from this for my patrons over on Patreon. So there'll definitely be some full length tutorials over there on the background in particular. And also just giving more information on how to work from a photo reference, but really make it more of a painting and make it more your own. But I'm sure that we'll also look at some full length tutorials on the dog himself. There's just so much colour in the fur, it's a really interesting one. And such a sweet pose as well, so relaxed looking with the little legs crossed. So just an absolute dream of a photo reference to work from. Ideal for turning into a very attractive painting. Lots of colour, lots of light and shade. I'm always advising my patrons to really be choosy about the photo reference that they work from. Try and make sure that there's at least some nice lighting in the photo reference. It doesn't always have to be sunshine, but that the lighting is good, that you can see the true colours of the animal. And I always think it helps when you've got an interesting background as well. So those are what I really love to create. As much as I like to do the pet portraits, I really love to paint backgrounds. I think it adds so much to a composition. So really keeping the zingier greens for out in the sunshine, using much more muted colours in the shadow. 
But again, not going into huge amounts of detail. When you're up close on this, the background really is quite loose and rough. My hope was that when it was complete and you stand back from it, that it has the effect that I was wanting. So the final part, just working on these little paws, being caught in the sunlight. And I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing lovely little Omi come together. Once again, please do subscribe here on YouTube if you've enjoyed this. I've got lots and lots of videos here on YouTube for you to check out. And then if you'd like more instruction, please do come and check out my Patreon as well. But thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy pastling.